the way to Words Paradise. I'm your host, Leonidal, and Watsy, Witches of the Coast. It's been so long since I've had to make a video about you, I thought we were almost getting cool again. I thought so. I mean, yeah, there was the blunder, there was the Dungeons and Dragons movie and about how you're talking about how you love emasculating male characters, and of course there's all the controversies with Magic the Gathering and with Dungeons and Dragons in general, not just the film, the OGL. It has been a long time. I figured I railed on you enough. I just laid it into you for a bit, and I was willing to take a step back, give you some breathers. I figure, you know what? You earned it. You just took a pounding from me for like seven rounds. You needed some recovery time, and I was willing to grant you that. Uh, but then you went and pulled this dumb stuff, talking about how, get this, you like half-race characters in Dungeons & Dragons? Do you like being able to get the benefit of two different races? Are you a half-orcish, half-human monk illusionist? Are you a half-human, half-elf? I mean, the possibilities are endless. Not anymore, they're not, because half races are being removed, because the idea is, get this, inherently racist. At least according to this article from Bounding Into Comics, let's take a look. Dungeons and Dragons to remove half species from player's handbook claims the entire idea is inherently racist. I, I don't get it. The idea of half species has been around for a long time now, and it's not just D and D. I mean, what are cat girls if not half human, half cat? Or is that somehow racist? Or a animalist, a animalist and a racist? I don't know. Ask the Japs. In their latest step forward on their long march to lost profits, Wizards of the Coast has revealed that they will be removing the concept of half species from the Dungeons and Dragons player's handbook. Now the thing is, half species, they mean half races, because remember, they were races first, but the idea of even calling them races was racist, so they changed it. You know, the, the Dark Elves, the Drow, they're no longer a race, because well of course that is racist. Uh, they're, the Dwarves, the Dwarves aren't a race, they're a species. So yes, these half species, because even calling them half species, species is somehow racist is being removed from Dungeons and Dragons player handbook on the grounds that they are not comfortable including an inherently racist concept in the game. Alright, what is racist about this? Let, let us take a look. Let us gallop on over to the dictionary. Racist, characterized by showing prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism against a person or people on the basis of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group, typically one that is a minority or marginalized, or a person who is prejudiced against and antagonistic towards people on the basis of their membership, basically the same thing, but as a person instead of an adjective. So, now you tell me, how is the idea inherently racist if it's just a descriptor. It's not like, oh, homeboy is a half-orc, all right, let's get him, string him up, white hoods up, noose the half-orc. That's not the case in Dungeons and Dragons. They don't even know the definition of the word racist. I mean, this is bananas. I pose this question. Is the idea of somebody who is mixed race inherently racist, or is it just a descriptor? I mean, Miles Morales, by their definition, Miles Morales, who is not Spider-Man, by the way, is an inherently racist character, because he's mixed race, he's half black, half Latino. Well, I guess since he's mixed race, it's inherently racist. Marvel, you're a racist company for creating Miles Morales. This forthcoming update was first announced publicly at the recent D&D Creators Summit, an event wherein Wizards of the Coast gathered a number of notable personalities ranging from game developers to content creators and provided them with a sneak peek at Dungeons & Dragons upcoming releases. Following a rocky start to the summit marred with various technical difficulty issues, well, yeah, they're too busy worried about what they gotta cut from the game because they're getting, you know, afraid of Twitter and all these, these woke points that they didn't actually pay all their technicians and their producers and people with good equipment to make sure the stuff is up and running. I mean, the technological side of this production was pretty much the Marvel MCU VFX team, if you ask me. The publisher eventually hosted a demo of their upcoming D&D Virtual Tabletop, after which D&D lead rules designer Jeremy Crawford, senior story designer Chris Perkins, and studio art director Josh Herman appeared for a Q&A session with the attendees. Now, I don't know the races of these individuals, you know, however, I am seeing a whole lot of generic white guy names, Jeremy, Chris, Josh. Throw in a Jimmy and a Ryan, and we got ourselves a white dude party. But yeah, these are the individuals that are going to lecture us on what is a racist. But again, I don't actually know if these are white guys. They're just very generic white guy names, so I like having that visual in my head. 
Eventually, the post-demo Q&A turned to the topic of Watsi's ongoing efforts to sanitize D&D, beginning with a question about how exactly the publisher makes use of their sensitivity readers. You know, anytime a company uses sensitivity readers, automatically I'm like, nope, I'm out. Ain't, ain't got no business putting my money towards a company that's using sensitivity readers. I'm just not about that life. If, if you're going to take my hard-earned money, I want it to go towards people whose jobs in that industry actually matter, not a sensitivity reader. Th those are the individuals you're giving money to who are probably too sensitive to capitalism in the first place. We don't send everything to the same people all the time. Well, of course not. That would be racist, I guess? I don't know. Crawford explained in their content review process, per a summary of the event posted on the EN World Forum by user Brimmels and a recap provided by content creator Daniel Kwan, different reviewers have different areas of expertise and experience. Everything gets sent to at least two people. So you're telling me it only takes two people. Watsi sends this stuff to two people that are going to have, you know, probably an agenda, probably have their own biases, and they're going to be the ones that get to make the rules and decisions for the entirety of the D&D franchise fandom, the paying customer, the large conglomerate corporation. Two people? Okay, I don't see how this is a money-making strategy. You'd be better off just not paying these two people and letting the market decide. But if you did that, you'd end up having people like me, the large contingent of D&D players, back when I was a DD and d player, I have hard quit the game at this point. Anyway, you'd have a large contingent of individuals like me who would let the market decide, who would be A-OK -okay with this, because the idea isn't racist. This is bananas. You're going to try and find racism in everything. You look hard enough, you watch The Sixth Sense. I'm sure that people like this will find a way to put racism in The Sixth Sense, even though it was made by a brown dude. The old inclusion review process had holes in it because they would only send out what they thought would be a problem. Now everything is sent out, so we aren't guessing what might be a problem. <laughs> oh my goodness, I don't even have a comment for that. It's just maddening. It is pure insanity. Our team are game designers and storytellers. We're not experts on culture and inclusion. Then don't focus on culture and inclusion. Let the market decide that. You just need to design a game. You don't even need to be storytellers. It, I mean, yeah, I guess if you're running modules, there's got to be some sort of story to it. But in general, most DMs, at least most DMs that I've met and when I DM, run their own homebrewed stories just using the settings of the Forgotten Realms or Greyhawk or whatever they're doing. So you don't even need to necessarily be good storytellers, just be good game designers. But here you are, taking things out of a game. A game that's been around since the 80s. Like, wh what are you doing? You're tarnishing history, you're tarnishing legacy. You want to talk about how you're not experts in culture and inclusion? The market will decide that. The fans, the people that buy the products will decide that. But here you are, losing butt-tons of money because you want to pander about culture and inclusion inclusion. Again, tell me how it was that you guys had like a 28% stock drop or 32% stock drop in the last quarter of 2022 with an upcoming projected 23% stock drop for, for this quarter, you know, the first third of this year. I, I can't wait to see the numbers on that. But yeah, you want to talk about culture and inclusion? That shouldn't be your focus. Your focus should be the green, the money. Who makes the money? You guys, if you give the customer what they want. And let me tell you, that blue-haired furry freak with an anime profile picture on Twitter, she ain't your customer because she probably don't even have a job. That's why she's able to tweet so much. We're focused on what damage should this creature do. Well, what you're really focusing is on what damage you're doing to your company. That's why everything goes through inclusion review now, so everything in our game brings out delight. Really? If everything in your game brings out delight, then why am I, a guy who's been playing the game for years, not delighted? Are, are you no longer worried about delighting me? Why? Because you already got my money for the past decade, decade and a half. You're not worried about my dollars anymore. You got what you want out of me, so you're now moving on to your shiny new toys, the people that you want to pander to, because that's what they are. To you, they're just demographics. You don't actually care about them. You're pandering to them because you see them as people that can give you money. You already had people giving you money. You had folk like me that loved the game, loved what it stood for, and guess what? It stood for just hanging out with your buddies. All this cultural stuff be damned. I can tell you, I've had many a D&D session where I'm sitting down with women, where I'm sitting down with people of a different melanin color than me. It didn't matter because, you know what? If the black dude wanted to be a tiny, you know, white fairy girl, it was fake. It was imaginary. It was in his head. And you know what? The character may have been cool. The character also may have been incredible annoying. It just sort of depends on who you're at, who you got at your table. But let me tell you, none of this pandering cultural and inclusion stuff was never an issue the last more than decade I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons. You're wanting to get money from people that don't pay for things. 
Even reprints are going through inclusion review. Well, yeah, what a shock. Reprints of Roald Dahl books and James Bond books and, uh, oh, what's an Agatha Christie books? Yeah, those are all getting, you know, reprints with new inclusivity. So why wouldn't you be doing the same? Now, let me tell you, for a long time, my favorite author was R.A. Salvatore. Like, all throughout high school, reading the Dritstewarden books, learning all about, you know, the, the Dark Elf Chronicles. Like, it was awesome. R.A. Salvatore was my favorite. I haven't bought an R.A. Salvatore book in years, but if Wizards decide to announce, hey, we're bringing back the R.A. Salvatore collection, all 12 books or however many there are, and one nice package that's going to come in this ornate box, like this great collector's item, I'm be like, nope, nope, not going to buy it, because I just know that those books will have been rewritten to cut out any sort of in-game racism. Like, the whole point was that he was a drow, uh, you know, who was actually a good guy. His story wouldn't even have any relevance because they would have to take out the idea that people were racist towards him because his you know race was an evil race and he had to build that trust and that relationship. I can't even imagine the Dritz de Warden, the Dark Elf series being done now because the entire concept of his character was rooted in the fact that because of his race he had to earn respect and earn trust and he was the best of the best. Dritz de Warden is the greatest fictional character to ever come out of Dungeons and Dragons and his story couldn't even be told today because of your damn sensitivity readers. Despite the fact that it is a story that needs to be told because of all the stuff in it, all the, the negative, unsavory aspects of life that you don't want to admit are real and will never go away no matter how much you pander to these Twitter freaks. That's why some older books are changing too. Well, like I said, I'm sure the Dritz Orden books are going to be changing. Further elaborating on Watsi's process, the designer detailed, we get a full report, we then address the issues identified, we have a conversation, then it goes back to the reviewers so that they can see what we did and comment as to whether to address the issue. We also now send the art, even the sketches, through the review process. Jeremy thinks of it as inclusion collaboration because it's a conversation going on. This isn't a conversation going on, this is bullying going on. You're letting these individuals on Twitter, these people that don't buy your products, bully you into making your game worse and therefore you not making money. Everyone, I've been making a lot of a stink about stuff on the Magic the Gathering side of things, and people in my comments either agree with me, and if they don't agree with me, here's what they're saying. It's not Watsy, it's Hasbro. It's all Hasbro's fault. Well, guess what? This isn't Hasbro speaking, guys. This is Watsy speaking. I'm tired of hearing the excuse Watsy wouldn't be doing this if not for Papa Hasbro, Big Daddy Hasbro. No, bootlicker witches of the coast are doing this of their own volition. This isn't Hasbro speaking right now. These are Watsy individuals speaking. So I don't want to hear about, oh, it's just, this is all because of Hasbro. No, it is not. Wizards of the Coast is just as wrong and just as evil as a company as Papa Hasbro. And the fact that you need to let, I get it, you love Wizards of the Coast. I did too for many years. But you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And Watsi has become the villain. Papa Hasbro didn't make them that. They became that of their own volition because they saw a slice of inclusivity pie because they think that the minority of individuals on Twitter represent real life and it doesn't. They became the villain. Stop simping for Wizards of the Coast. To this end, Crawford then confirmed that due to the game now having four elf variants for players to choose from when creating a character, standard elves, high elves, wolf elves, and the drow, the player's handbook would soon be revised to do away with half species. Frankly, we're not comfortable and haven't been for years on any of the options that start with half. Why? Because it is accurate? If a human chick and an elf dude bump uglies it's gonna be a half kid because it's gonna have traits of each. That's just how it works in the D&D world. That's not racist. It's a gameplay mechanic. It's actually a really cool feature. You get a little of the good and a little of the bad that come with those races. There's a reason they exist like that. It also makes me question world building. So back to the chick human and the dude elf smashing together. So what happens when the chick gets pregnant? I mean, I'm sure that male elves can get pregnant too now. It is woke of the coach. But or Wizards of the Woke. Which do you guys like better? I think Witches of the Woke works. Anyway, point is, so when she gets pregnant, is it now just a flip of the coin? It's either a human baby or an elf baby? Or can they now just not smash at all that results in a pregnancy? These are the questions that haunt me. The half construction is inherently racist, so we simply aren't going to include it in the new player's handbook. Well, guess what? No one buy the new player's handbook. You heard it here first. Or maybe not first if you've already read, read this article. Point is, you're hearing it from me, your boy Leon. The one with some sense. Some common damn sense. You heard it from Words of Paradise. Don't buy this new player's handbook. Hit them where it hurts, their wallet. Stop spending money on this garbage. They will eventually course correct if we hit them hard enough. 
Unsurprisingly, Crawford did not expand on his accusation, and thus his reasoning behind the claim remains unknown, because there's no good answer for it. However, despite the removal from the player's handbook, Crawford assured players that if someone wants to play those character options, they'll still be in D&D Beyond, and they'll still be in the 2014 player's handbook. Well, then if they're still going to be in those places, why remove them from the new handbook? At this point, you're just like, hey, we're not, we, we don't want to be racist. We will leave all the racist stuff up online and leave all the old racist books out there. But going forward, we don't want to be racist. But, if, but, but, you know, our old racist stuff will still be there. Then how, even if it was racist, how would you then be fighting racism if you weren't trying to scrub that stuff. See, y you want to look at this as, oh, we're meeting in the middle. You're not meeting in the middle. You're being hypocrites and doing what you can to get that dollar. And I'd be okay with it since I am a fan of capitalism, but I hate this disingenuous, holier-than-thou, high-horse, dumb effery that's going on at Wizards of the Coast. No, no, no. You need to put some half-races in the player's handbook because that's how D&D &D has almost always worked. And the fact that you're not doing it but you're keeping the old stuff, just proves there isn't a real reason behind this aside from looking good for the Twitter freaks. It should be noted, though, that players may still be allowed to create half-characters thanks to their removal from the core materials. Such characters cannot be used in an officially sanctioned event. Oh, as of writing, it is unclear when the player's handbook will officially be revised, nor when it will hit shelves. Look, if you've been a long-time viewer on my channel, I assume you're actually not supporting Witches of the Woke anymore. Uh, but if you are, I'd say that now, pretty good time to stop. And if, if you're not supporting them, trust me, I, I, you're doing a lot just like me. I haven't bought any sealed magic product in about a year and a half. Do more. Do what I'm doing. Make some content. Get out there and start screaming from the rooftops about how this company needs to be stopped. Get out there and tell your friends, stop buying this. Support alt games. I got someone coming on my live show that I'm about to start next month. Uh, or, uh, no, I'm sorry, later this month. It's April now. I got someone coming on my live show later this month who's creating an alternative to Magic the Gathering because of crap like this. Because of crap that happened you know, with the Pokemon debacle where the kid got DQ'd for getting nervous and laughing when asked about his pro like that is bananas. Find alternatives to anything Witches of the Coast, Wizards of the Coast, Papa Hasbro, whatever you want to call them. Quit buying Hasbro toys. Don't go see the Dungeons and Dragons movie if you haven't already. I mean, I'm not going to advocate that you head to the high seas with your eye patch, but if you must see it, there are other options is all I'm going to say. And stop doing what you can or start doing what you can to stop supporting this company and support alt individuals. You're going to get to see if you watch my show April uh, 20 something, I, the second episode of my upcoming show Countercast, uh, you will get to learn about this Magic the Gathering alternative that's coming out and I think it'll be great for you guys. I think it's going to be great for the gaming space if it gets off the ground how things go. I'm really excited to learn about it. I hope you guys are excited to learn more about it as well and I hope we can all rally together like a misfit band of D&D merry men and take the fight to the dragon that is Wizards of the Coast. But that's just my opinion. So let me know yours in the comments below or let me know on Twitter where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I do nerdy news every day. Uh, I just hit above the 700 subscriber mark, which is amazing. I couldn't have done this without you. So thank you so much. I can't wait to hit that 1,000 mark. This is all because of you. So let's keep pumping those numbers up. Thanks again. And as a nerdy news channel, I cover nerdy news every day, not always about Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering, but also about anime, movies, Disney, you name it. It's all here in the Nerdosphere, and this has been Words of Paradise.